Hey guys, DJ Lifestyle here, back with another video. Right, um, for those living in the UK, we have, um, well, they're exposing the, the corruption. You have the police uh, man, Gareth Waterman, I think his name is, or Waterman. Um, he's doing his bit um, by sending out emails to um, the MPs and uh, um, exposing uh, deep, deep corruption within um, the financial system that we have today linked to um, people who are no longer with us and um, names I should not I shall not mention but you can think of one of these peoples who had an island somewhere and um, think about that and also what's happened with in the last if you like since 2019 up till this point where um, you know all all the, the stuff that they did to humans and the WF that video I played earlier on um, speaking about um, um, you know, financial change and all that kind of stuff. And as you notice, Bitcoin price is up to 73, went up to 73 today, may well go back down a bit. Uh, um, but it is um, kind of like doing some stuff, some weird stuff at the moment. Um, is that because of the ETFs? I don't know. But the main purpose of this video is to say that um, an awful lot of distractions taking place. Um, Tories, like in the UK, um, like in the USA, um, they're uh, what, have, have what parties you want to call them, uh, Democrats and whatever whatever they are over there all accept donors and though donors have the power to control what legislation gets passed through etc etc they usually get lots of different government contracts um, and this is now being exposed all of this is now coming to light and um, you know is is this the pivotal moment in history where the rest of human kind wake up and start to look at our political system and demand change anyway with that said i'm going to play you the video one back to back one from lbc and another one from um, gb news um so you know do watch do listen do please listen to what they say because they are the only these independent um medias are not always agree with um um, what they come out with I don't always being honest with you but um, the mainstream media are full of crap and you're never going to get the truth you're going to get um, moved from one story to the next to the next to the next as as as, uh, as you'll hear in this um, video anyway that said guys take care of yourselves do pay attention to what's going on in the world in terms of not necessarily the distractions but you know what the rich are doing yeah they are controlling this planet at the moment and it's time for us to have a change of you know change just change because, because the system is broken it's not meant to keep people alive it, it, it kills people um on mass whether it be through the medical system or um through wars or whatever planet the planet what they're doing to the planet spraying all that stuff up there all that kind of stuff yeah Anyway, do check lifestyle out. Take care of yourselves. Have a great day. I mean, this is not anything new from the Tories anyway. They're, they've been, they have, you know, Boris Johnson said, um, said some stop, terrible stuff about uh, black people calling them picking any. So, you know, I'm not surprised that, you know, this has come out and, uh, and um, you know, it's being exposed. But it just goes to show that we definitely need change and we need a much more inclusive world anyway guys i'm out i just had to add that because like you know and i will add this as well labor uh, labor are going to be no different trust me on this one they're going to be no different they're all the same they're all the same as, as george galloway calls them two uh cheats off the same backside anyway i'm out so racist and wrong. That's how a spokesperson for the Prime Minister branded the alleged comments made by a major Tory donor about the black Labour MP, Diane Abbott. Diane Abbott was, of course, the first black woman to be elected mm. to Parliament. Uh, the comments from a donor called Frank Hester, he is the party's biggest ever donor, told the meeting that Diane Abbott, and I quote, should be shot. And it made him, quote again, want to hate all black women. Uh, he has since apologised.
However, it's the lack of immediate condemnation of Hester's remarks which are now causing the Prime Minister a political headache. Let's get the thoughts on all of this uh, from Catherine Forster. Um, look, what on earth took the Prime Minister so long to call out racism? Have we gone backwards in this country? It seems to be becoming a bit of a pattern, doesn't it? When they're in an awkward situation, whether it be Sakir Starmer with Azar Ali, the candidate for Rochdale that they ultimately had to drop over anti-Semitic comments, whether it be um, the reaction to the comments that Lee Anderson made that finally cost him the whip, or whether it be the quite shocking remarks made by this Tony, a Tory donor that gave them £10 million. Politicians really seem to struggle to say what to millions of people up and down the country uh, would be quite obvious. Now, in the case of Rishi Sunak, they spent all day yesterday saying that the comments um, that Diane Abbott should be shot, that it, it made it, she made him want to hate all black women were unacceptable, but they would not say that they were racist. And then the business secretary, Kemi Badenoch, came out late in the afternoon, said on Twitter, these comments are wrong and racist. And lo and behold, a couple of hours later, uh, the prime minister's spokesman said the same. Now, what took them so long? Well, I suspect um, it's all to do with the fact that he gave the party £10 million last year, £10 million out of a total of 48 million they were given last year. Bear in mind there's a general election looming. In admitting that the comments were racist, then that begs the question, which Labour and the Lib Dems are already asking, well, why haven't you given the money back? Clearly, they don't want to. They say um, he's apologised profusely, which he has. He's tried to ring Diane Abbott, who said that they make her feel threatened. She's a woman. She goes out and about on public transport. Um, so the calls for them to give the money back growing, uh, I have to say, I don't think that's going to happen. OK, Catherine, thanks very much indeed. Joining us now in the studio, co-founder of Conservatives Against Racism, that's Albi Amancona. Uh, Albi, I mean, obviously this is embarrassing. Um, uh, how hurtful do you, do you find it? How shocking do you find it? Shocking. I mean, even when you read out the comments just now, Eamon, I was shocked. Every time I hear the comments, I am shocked and shocked again. Look, in terms of where the Conservative Party has ended up on this issue, I would say we got there in the end. I think it was very disappointing that I was one of the only voices yesterday morning to come straight off the bat and say this was a racist comment. Quasi Quarteng also said it on a BBC politics yeah. show. Kemi Badenoch tweeted about it later on in the day. But I tell you who's not saying anything about it, the Prime Minister. Well, he said something about it later on, later on in the day it's yesterday. A spokesperson. Well, exactly. And I am sure that in Prime Minister's questions today, the question will come up and he will have to give a straight and honest answer because anything else will mm. be unacceptable to me. But as I said, on the Conservatives, um, where we've arrived on this, we got there in the end. On the question about whether or not the money should be given back, which I'm sure everyone wants to know whether or not that is something which should be done, I've been very firm on this. I don't actually think it should be given back. My view is that the money should be spent on people and causes that can improve the conservative and centre-right race relations calls within the Conservative Party to ensure that nothing like this happens again. Good can come from this. The next steps matter. And I can't believe I'm even going to ask you this question, Albie, but just explain why it is important to call out racism, not least when we've seen two MPs murdered for doing their jobs. Because it is wrong. It's a simple matter of right and wrong. We know racism is wrong. Britain is not a racist country. Millions of people up and down the country will have heard the comments that were reported uh, yesterday from five years ago. 2019 is not a long time ago. I remember 2019. I'm sure you do. I'm sure our viewers do as well. It was not a time where these comments were ever acceptable. And millions of people up and down the country would have thought that was totally wrong. Mm. And the minister on the media round yesterday morning was not able to say what the country was thinking. Well, he must have been furious. Imagine being told you're not allowed to say that and being put out in front of the, the baying media. It's an incredibly difficult position that ministers are being yeah. put in, and that's weak leadership. Yeah. 
It is a hugely difficult position for ministers to be put in, for then the position to change later on in the day, and the Conservative Party needs to do better. You see, as you say, for a position to change later in the day, Albie, to me, things are either right or wrong, and it's obvious right from the start what is the right thing to do. So, you you know, some 17-year-old advisor telling you to do this, I I would think, no, just get on and say what what needs to be said. There will be an argument, though, and, and I find this equally distasteful, that a lot of people will try and excuse this by saying, yeah, but it's Diane Abbott we're talking about here. And there will not be a lot of sympathy uh, for Diane Abbott. But there's there's no room. I mean, this is wrong. It's wrong whatever way you look at it and whoever it is about. I have profound political differences with Diane Abbott. Profound political differences with Diane Abbott. I would never use language like this against Diane Abbott. She was the first black female MP elected in Parliament. There are many black politicians that Conservatives look to today, people like Kemi Badenoch, for example, people like Helen Grant, people like James Cleverly, Bim Afalami, for example, who I do not think would be where they are in politics today were it not for people like Diane Abbott in the mid-20th century blazing the trail for black politicians in this country. We can disagree with her politically. Yes, she's said some very questionable and anti-Semitic things in the past, but she deserves respect and she does not deserve mm. to be told that she makes you want to hate all black mm. people or that she, she should be shot. These are incitements to violence, racist comments and also misogynistic. Um, unacceptable. Albie, there's good news news that the government would be able to be talking about this morning. You know, we've seen the economy grow, which everyone's been banging on about for so long. We could soon be out of this this recession. It could be a short and shallow recession. The government will be very much hoping to focus on that. They're bringing in new legislation to quash the convictions of these wrongfully convicted postmasters. But because of the delay and the dither, nobody's talking about that. And that has to be a serious question about leadership. Do we need to have a general election now? The Prime Minister will call a general election when he's ready to call a general election. I personally do not think now would be a good time for a general Why election. Not? Because it is very clear that there are kinks that need to be ironed out in the number 10 machine before we go into an election. I think the response to this uh, racist, clearly racist incident uh, over the past couple of days has shown that there is something which is not working and that needs to be quickly corrected. And there should not be a general election until that correction has happened. The The government and Rishi Sunak have a good story to tell on taxes, on bringing down immigration, although it is too high, on new legislation which is coming forward about crime. There's a good story to tell, but things keep getting scuppered Mm. because of these PR mishaps. Mm. And that needs to be corrected before there is a general election. Uh, What about future donations to the party in the run up to that election? Is there any way back for Mr Hester? I think it would be very difficult to see a way back for Mr Hester to the Conservative Party in terms of being a donor or even a member, to be quite frank. I would not be comfortable um, with us to continue to take money from this man. As I mentioned before, with the monies that have already been given to the party, I've outlined how I think that should be spent on people and causes who can further the Conservative and centre-right race relations cause, but there should be no further relationship with Mr Hester Given that this is the, the second racism row at the centre of the Conservative Party in the last two weeks, have you been contacted or s- approached for advice from Number 10, given your capacity in, in setting up this, this group of Conservatives against racism? No, I haven't personally been contacted. You know, I've met Rishi Sunak. I know some of the team at Number 10. I know many Conservative MPs. I've spoken to Conservative MPs privately. I'm always here if people want to chat. Um, I'm here to help. Conservatives Against Racism is here to help. There are many other groups that are here to help in the Conservative Party with issues like this. It didn't have to come to this. The right line could have been taken yesterday and we would have been talking about something else by mm. now. Well, I think it's so important to talk to you. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important to say, look, if we're to move forward in this, if we are, what would we do with this donation? Um, How would you see it working? Who would you see it helping? Mm -hmm. I do just think it's, again, common sense. Call Albion, talk to to you and your associates Mm -hmm. with that sort of thing. And it's it's an opinion, but it's it's an essential opinion within Mm -hmm. the Conservative Party, I would have thought. Um, 
Grace, let's come to you next. Um, th these political rows sort of bubble up from time to time and then after a few days th another event happens mm. and the, the news media uh, is dominated by something else. This seems to me to be on a different scale from the sort of inappropriate remarks that people have made in the past. Yeah, it's absolutely horrific and the kind of non-apology that was given just makes it far worse. But I think actually, Ian, you, know, you raise a really good point there, which is that we always treat these problems of kind of racist abuse as an issue of kind of one or two bad <coughs> apples it's one bad individual who said one bad thing and then we don't look at the kind of systematic perpetuation of a culture of racism in major institutions and particularly in this case in the conservative party as a whole oh i don't think you can just say oh you know, it just so happens that we're seeing all of these random, you know, statements made from, you know, there have been lots of statements made by senior Conservative Party members and they're all completely uh, separate from one another and it just so happens that there's lots of bad people who happen to be racist. And in fact, you know, I think you can say this across a number of different institutions and that issue of institutional racism is something that conserv the Conservative Party has frequently said, oh, it doesn't exist, it's just, you know, uh, an individual moral failing and that's actually I think the problem and it's why we keep getting these scandals over and over again and nothing ever really done about it. But that was exactly what was said about the Labour Party and anti-Semitism Well it? no, I mean exactly, that's the point right, it's it's always a case that rather than seeing these as, as institutional issues that require um, communication, training the, the dissemination of, of different ideas, uh, it's just like there's one bad guy at the top or there's one bad person who said one bad thing and I never subscribed to that idea, I thought yes there's an, a problem of anti-Semitism, there's problems of racism, there's problems of Islamophobia. How do you tackle that? It's by accepting that racism is a structural problem. It's actually foundational to, you know, much of our society. So how do we combat that? It is about talking to people, about engaging with people and undermining the stereotypes, the very harmful stereotypes upon which a lot of this stuff is based. Angela, what do you make of this? Um, I... I've been unable to believe that it's taken the Prime Minister all day until about 10 minutes before we came on here to finally get his spokesperson to admit that this was racist. It's the definition of racist to say that looking at a named person makes you hate all black women. Um, so not only is it racist, it's sexist and it incites violence um, because it, he said she should be shot. Now, um, he's not apologised for saying that he said he was rude about her so there has been no apology from him um and there's been no real apology he says he's tried to phone her well, twice i'm but not sure she, i'm not to. i'm not surprised she doesn't want to pick up the phone to somebody she, she's never met who has treated her like that um she will now be uh, as she always has been in her career and remember she's a pioneering um, the first black woman MP. She's a pioneer, whether you like her or not. She's due some respect. Uh, and why should she pick up the phone to somebody she's never met who has caused an, another huge pile on and made her feel unsafe? She said she feels frightened as a result of this. So, uh, you know, he hasn't apologised. Where's the professionalism, accountability and integrity that Rishi Sunak talked about? They should give the money back. And we should look also, I think, to see whether TPP, which is the company that he runs, uh, and him are fit and proper recipients of government contracts, NHS contracts. The NHS has a huge black workforce. If he's got that sort of attitude to black people and women, then it all needs to be looked at. And the minimum that the Tory party should do, if he's a member of the Conservative Party, is suspend him. I think he was the treasurer of the party at one stage. Um, he has an OBE. They should look at, at all of that. But they should certainly give the money back. Diane Abbott, at the end of her statement, said, I'm currently not a member of the Parliamentary Labour Party, but remain a member of the Labour Party itself. Yeah. So I'm hoping for public support from Keir Starmer. Which she got. Which she got. Today. Is it not, Very strongly. Is it, wouldn't it be a sign of sort of a duty of care for him to readmit her to the parliamentary party? Well, we have an independent process uh, which is independently overseen by lawyers, which is ongoing, and that nobody, and I'm a member of the NEC, can, uh, can interfere in. So we, since since the anti-Semitism stuff... I don't think that's true in the case of the parliamentary party, is it? I mean, the, the, the chief whip or the leader can just readmit someone to the parliamentary party. But, yeah, but she's suspended pending this investigation, which is ongoing. 
So, I mean, I personally... But as, a, as an act of kindness, I think surely that ought to be considered now, because she... I mean, if you read her statement... Um, I mean, I'm not trying to get an onion out of my pocket, but, I mean, she's clearly very upset by this, understandably so. Quite right. Yeah. Quite right. And there's a lot but of... Would you like to see her come back? I, I, I personally... Oh, you can't say because you're on the NEC. I can't say because I'm on the NEC. I've always regarded Diane Abbott as a pioneer, as the first black woman MP who, as I said earlier, is due a lot of respect. I have a great deal of respect for her. Ian Beryl, what do you make of this? Well, obviously, it's abhorrent. It's grotesquely racist. He, this won't have just been a one-off thing that he said. It's obviously his views, which is really disturbing. I think it also throws into perspective a bigger issue, which is the whole issue of party funding. Here's a guy who's given £10 million to the Tory party. Why do people like that give £10 million? Mm. He used to be a Green, now he's a Tory. We saw it with Bernie Ecclestone, who gave money to both the Tories and to Labour. Why do they do it? Because they want to get something back. He's a man who gets gets all his money Could from... Could be of philanthropy and you're so cynical. Philanthropy, but then also we have a system whereby we know that these people end up in the House of Lords we're about the only country in the world which actually legitimises corruption and mm. says if you give enough money you can get a seat for, for, for life in Parliament. Uh, I really hope that Keir Starmer is going to deal with this and deal with the obscenity of the House of Lords and all the party donors going in. But I think it really throws into question yet again the sleazy way that we fund politics in this country, the sleazy way that these people operate, the relationships of these sorts of people, and we need to just really look into this. Personally, I loathe the idea of state funding for parties, but I think it's the least bad option. But we just have a system which, which legitimises corruption, and that's what we're seeing again here. A guy gets all his money from state contracts, mm. flips around the political parties, has what really abhorrent views, and he even lends Rishi Sunak, who's half as rich as him, his helicopter to use. You know, there's something fundamentally wrong in the way we fund politics in this country. The, the unspoken story here, in, not on this, but on party funding, is that I have yet to meet any politician, Labour, Conservative, Liberal Democrat, Green, SNP, whatever, who actually enjoys dealing with party donors. They absolutely loathe it. I don't know whether you, you can... Uh, whether you agree with that, Angela, but I, I suspect that if you get a call from Labour Party HQ saying, Angela, we'd quite like you to come and meet this group of donors, your heart slightly sinks. I mean, all I can say is, um, having visited Germany, where they do respect democracy because they nearly, well, they lost it for a while, they have a system of state funding there which I think works really well. And it also demonstrates that uh, the country itself has... Um, a, a commitment to en ensuring that democracy can be funded. Now, I know it's not popular, and you yourself said that you loathe the idea, but it is, in my view, by far the least worst option. It makes things transparent and fair, and it gets everybody away from this awful um, sort of hunt for money. Well, I mean, the other option is to have a, a mass political party that has support from members, from trade unions, from a kind of countervailing power that's capable of lobbying against the interests of the private sector, because at the moment we have this deep imbalance in every area of society where basically private capitalists are able to get their way over and over again within the state. Interestingly enough, I talk about this in the book um, with the example of, of Lex Greensill and his relationship with David Cameron yes. and actually his relationship with um, many different parts of the British state. This wasn't just about... Uh, you know, an individual politician and, uh, and a businessman. This man had uh, links with vast areas of the British state, used those to get NHS contracts, and then when his business was uh, potentially going to go under, used that to try and lobby for uh, for emergency funding, as did many businesses that we won't have heard about. So this is, as you mentioned, it's a question of corruption. We use corruption as a word that applies to kind of, you know, dark, impoverished countries over there, um, and we never actually recognise the ways in which those corrupt links between the public and private sector are used to promote the interests of, um, you know, mainly the wealthiest and most powerful people And by people the way, trade economy. union money mm. has virtually been legislated out of existence mm. by very, well, very... that's simply not what, true. No, I mean, by very, unite, very... Unite by giving very, millions no, to the Labour they Party. they do not. By very, very one-sided... Uh, legislation which makes it virtually impossible for trade unions to now give money to the Labour Party. Well, I, so, I, 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 haven't, mean, I haven't got the list the, of party donations here, but the, most well, of the big trade unions are major donors to the Labour Party. Well, you'll find that the changes to the 
trade union legislation have made that much, 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 much harder. And it's been deliberately done to impoverish the Labour Party so that the Conservative Party can have a huge funding advantage, which they've Alexander, now got. Alexander, you wanted to come in? Oh, well, I was just going to reflect on uh, Grace's comment about uh, the, the mass unit. The trade unions do give significantly large funds to the Labour Party. So trade unions do give money. People do give money at all parties. I think and they've been relentlessly it, attacked. I, democratically and I decided the last as well. Several decades. And democratically decided that that money it's not given by one bloke with abhorrent views i mean that is the thing you know we have this system of basically the cartelization of our political parties as they've been removed from their mass bases um the people who are able to organize most effectively behind the scenes the people with the most money with the closest links to various different areas of the state have gained this massive upper hand when it comes to lobbying our politicians and actually lobbying state institutions it's no wonder that the vast majority of people feel as though they have no voice in our democracy because they basically don't. Just before we move on, um, in, in a previous life, you wrote speeches for David Cameron in opposition when he was determined to detoxify the Tory brand and made, I think, the Conservative Party far more attractive to people from different minorities. I mean, th this sort of thing, I mean, both of these stories this week, Lee Anderson and this one, I mean, there'll be lots of people listening to this programme who who are from an ethnic minority background who may have voted Conservative in one or two of the, the previous elections, but just now think, well, I can't do that anymore. I mean, David Cameron, I, I don't know which part of the world he's in at the moment as far as Secretary, but I mean, he must say all that work for nothing. We've got to a point where we've got more people from ethnic minorities in the cabinet than ever before. That wouldn't have happened without those measures. It's true. And also, I mean, Saeed Awasi has been very strong about Islamophobia within mm. the party, you know, the acceptable dinner party racism, as she called it very rightly. There is a real problem, I think, still within the Conservative Party, reflecting wider problems in society to do with racism, to do with Islamophobia. Uh, and we don't, they don't crack down on it enough. But it's, it's, a, it's a wider problem, I think, within society. And we could touch on other issues also, you know, let's look at the attitudes towards people with disabilities, mm. the, the minority we never talk about, who are still probably the most excluded minority in this country. And we never hear anything. But what we do hear all the time from now the Conservative Party is this attack on the idea that diversity training and a little bit of money is a terrible thing. And we hear that local government's in a bad state this week because of a few, you know, a little bit of money going on diversity training. Well, actually, I think maybe we need a bit more diversity training, clearly in a lot of places, because we've got such problems across society. I, I, just simply this calculation is not true. Look at the Conservative uh, government at the moment. It's one of the most, diver the most diverse government that has ever been. We have an, an Asian, uh, Asian background uh, Prime Minister. Uh, the w Minister for Women Equality is a black woman. We've had Asian chancellors. We have black chancellors. We are the most diverse party. We've not even, had, we've even kind of had, dare I say, women leaders, not which the Labour Party has not had. Not socially diverse. <laughs> so, but, so I, mean, I, think this... it, actually, I think this is because that part is actually the most diverse, the most reflective party of modern Britain out Why there. Why can't and we've it got call to out racism that. when it sees it then? Why has it taken the Prime Minister all day after sending out two ministers, including mm. Mel Stride, who was his campaign manager, to make fools of themselves on the television this morning, denying that what Hester said was mm. actually racist? Well, that, it is clearly racist. We've said that. But what I'm saying is the Conservative Party does not have this problem because look at the, the Cabinet. We, have, we are the most reflective of modern British body of any, of any the exact party out problem there. with tokenism and well, with the idea. I don't say, I don't say having, the, having the first Asian heritage. This is actually a totally you know, argument. That's exactly correct. No, but, but the idea tokenism. of tokenism, which is it's, that you can place, you know, people from ethnic minorities, women in positions of power, and then well, say, don't placed, we don't no, have any problem with racism because look, we've got it, well, people from ethnic minorities in positions of power. They've earned their places. Nothing placed there. These people are the best and brightest in their field, and they've earned their places. But what you're saying is that we can't be racist because we have people from ethnic minorities in positions of power, which is just wrong. It's the same absurd no, kind of no, thinking as when... No, what I'm saying when... is we we're not institutionally racist because people, age, age, Asian people, minority people, thrive in the Conservative Party, rise to the very top of the Conservative Party. What you, what I'm you not just said there is we can't apples. be institutionally racist because we have people from ethnic because minorities thr in, in, in minorities senior thrive, positions. Thrive and that's in the, the party. problem because it, it doesn't look at the foundations of these inequalities and it, it kind of, you know, the whole Conservative policy is to deride the idea of institutional racism as kind of, you know, 
know, this is the the thing that we've got in the US where institutional racism is is cultural Marxism and it's all a big conspiracy designed to, um, you know, uh, basically kind of undermine uh, certain voices within society. And like, that is the problem. If you can't admit to the idea of institutional okay. racism, then everything there is by definition. There are lots of other subjects to cover, which we will do so over the next 40 minutes. It's 20 past eight. This is LBC.